<laughs> Hi everyone, and welcome to Jen Learn Stuff. I am here on the second floor at Science North, and I'm gonna go into the F. Jean Butterfly Gallery. I'm about to play a prank on one of my friends. I'm gonna pretend to be the biggest northern butterfly that they've ever seen in their gallery. Come on. Jen, what are you doing in here? Uh... <laughs> I see you, you're not hiding. Well, I got a little hungry and thought that I could eat the fruit. But that's for our butterflies, they like the fruit. This is Jackie. Jackie is the horticultural technician for the Science Center. Well, Jackie, how do the butterflies eat the fruit? Great question. I have the perfect way to show you over here. It looks like I'm about to learn some stuff about butterflies. So Jackie, you said that the fruit over there was for the butterflies. What do you mean? How do they eat that fruit? Well, they don't eat like us with our teeth. They have a proboscis. A uh, what now? A proboscis. Is that their little tongue thingy? Yeah, it is. It's like, it's their mouth part, but it's more of a straw than a tongue. If you look at the model here, you can see how this is curled up when he's not eating. And when he is eating, he sticks it into whatever he's eating. <laughs> that looks like the best straw ever. Yes, they use the proboscis to go into the fruit, to suck out the nectar, the juices, the sugars, to help them live and grow. Oh, so like those are where they get the good vitamins to help them grow nice and strong like us. That's correct. All creatures need to eat good food in order to grow big and strong. Wait a second though. If a butterfly has a straw to eat, does that mean that their food is mainly a liquid diet? Yes, it is a liquid diet. And some butterflies live two weeks. Some butterflies can live longer if they eat more than just a liquid diet, like decaying matter, feces, oh. rotting stuff. Ew, did she just say feces? Ugh, gross! Yeah, Jennifer, that is to us, but most butterflies only eat nectar. Do you know any other insects that eat nectar? <gasps> I do! Bees! <laughs> butterflies, wasps, beetles, those are all nectar eaters. Oh, so that makes all of them great pollinators. Yes, it's really impressive to think of all the insects that are responsible to help our ecosystem be diverse. Oh, wow, Jackie, that's a really cool fact. Oh, wow. Jackie, look at that one. <gasps> look at the colors on its wings. It's so pretty. Did you want to know a cool fact of how the butterflies get their color? Oh, yes, that sounds really fun. Then follow me and I'll show you. There are two ways that butterflies get the color on their wings. So if we look at these examples here, you can see how pretty they are. So Jackie, I noticed that there's two different kind of way that I see these colors. How does it work? What's the first one you were talking about? The first one is structural and it's how the wings are made. The wings are clear, covered with scales and all these little scales let light go through them and then it bounces off. And when it bounces off, it creates different colors like a rainbow. Wow, so like a rainbow? I love rainbows. So what's the second way that they get the coloring? Okay, the second way is chemical. And that's kind of like us with pigmentation. We have blue eyes, we have brown eyes, we have dark skin. Butterflies have the colors of yellow, 
and browns and blacks, and that's chemical, that's built within them. So like me and my freckles. <laughs> You're right, and some butterflies use both of those methods. How, how? I don't know if I understand, Jackie. Can you explain that just a little bit more, please? Well, remember we talked about the rainbow? Those colors are yellows and blues and greens, and then the chemical ones are the browns and the blacks. There's no orange in there. The monarch uses both of them. On himself, chemical, he's yellow. Reflection, he's red. What color does that make? I know this, orange. <laughs> <laughs> huh, I wonder. Hey, Jackie, is there a difference in color between a male butterfly and a female butterfly? Sometimes there are differences, but not always. A lot of times the male will be more bright and colorful because he's showing off for the girls. Oh, <laughs> I think that might make me a male butterfly. <laughs> Wait, Jackie, is the coloring on butterflies only for mating? Or is there maybe, is there another reason why a butterfly would have so many like vivid colors? Yes, Jen, butterflies use color for camouflage to make them look bigger for other predators. And they also have bright colors to tell things that they taste bad. <gasps> so butterflies don't taste good? How do they let people know that? Butterflies with bright colors like orange and yellow and red say, I taste bad, don't eat me. And we know a lot of butterflies that have those colors. Our favorite one is the monarch. Wow, that is really cool. Hey, Jackie, so because we're talking about wings, I heard someone once tell me that you should never touch a butterfly's wing because that could really harm them. Is that true? Yes, remember we were talking about how a butterfly's wing is a membrane covered with scales. Those scales can be rubbed off really easily and then the butterfly might not be able to fly anymore. I have a wing here you could rub and see how oh. delicate it is. <gasps> oh, look at that. So Jackie, I guess what you're telling me is the best thing to do when I see a butterfly is to let it land, look at it, and let it flutter away. <laughs> yeah, Jen, that's the best thing to do. Hey, Jackie, all of this talk about butterflies has gotten me thinking about the life cycle of a butterfly. Like, we are talking about the butterfly, but I know that they start as a caterpillar, and I don't see any caterpillars around here. So how does Science North get their butterflies? Well, Jen, I have a special room to show you. Follow me. I've ever been in here. Hi, Jen. No, this is the back rooms. Public really doesn't come in here. This is where we receive our butterflies from Re South America and Asia. You, you receive your butterflies from a box? They get mailed to us in a box. Okay, but wait a second. I don't think it's very nice to be putting butterflies in boxes, Jackie. I don't think they're gonna like that. You're right, they don't like it. It's not the butterflies that we ship. Okay, so what you're saying is that they ship caterpillars in the box? Not really, Jen. What they do, caterpillars wouldn't like that any better. They ship chrysalis and cocoons in the box because it's the safest way to ship them. They're not flying yet. So do they create their homes? Like, are, are these their homes? These are their homes for the next couple weeks while they're, while they're developing. These hang on the plants and trees in the jungles where they live until they're ready to come out as a butterfly. So Jackie, if they're supposed to be hanging, I noticed that they're not right now, but are they hanging in the box? Like, do we like put trees inside of there? Like, is this kind of like a Mary Poppins type thing where, you know, like it comes out that way? I would need a way bigger box for that, but we wouldn't want to harm the trees either. They're just packed in here and then I pin them so they're hanging. We can go in the gallery and show you how I do it. We're gonna go and see how we pin pupa. Okay, Jen. Come look over here. This is where we're pinning them. So I have lots of pins in here, lots of pupas, and we're gonna hang them again. Oh, 
Wow! So, Jackie, you're using little needles. Is that dangerous for them? Not if I'm very careful. Remember we said they hang on the tree, so they use a, a special piece of silk to hang. And if I use that special piece of silk, and I put the little pin through that, I'm not touching him. Oh, because it wouldn't be safe to puncture the cocoon or the chrysalis. No, that would hurt him and then he wouldn't finish his job and come out. Oh. So they all have a little piece of silk and then we pin it on the bar until he's ready to come out. Hey, Jackie, I noticed something else that's kind of interesting. What is all this moss and like, it, it looks wet and moist in there. It is wet and moist because this cabinet is more humid than the rest of the gallery. And why is that? That's to give the butterflies extra time to open their wings. Oh. Do you think that big wing fits in that little <laughs> shell? <laughs> no, I guess not. It'd be kind of like putting me in that small box. <laughs> yes, you wouldn't fit. So when butterflies first come out, their wings are all wet because they've been wrapped around them. And then they come out and they slowly pump their wings open until they're the right size. Oh, wow. It is so cool, but it's really hot in here. It feels like summertime. <laughs> Yes, in here it's summertime, even in the winter. <laughs> Butterflies don't like the cold. Right. Hey, Jackie, I was wondering, so we learned that a butterfly starts off as a caterpillar, then turns off into a chrysalis or transforms to a chrysalis and then turns into a butterfly. But how long is their lifespan as a butterfly? Butterflies on average live for about two weeks, which isn't very long. Moths can live even shorter than that. That is such a short lifespan. So what do they actually do in just two weeks? Well, in here, they fly around, they eat, and they mate. <gasps> Right, so that we can have eggs to turn into caterpillars, to turn into chrysalis, to turn into butterflies, so that we can enjoy them flitting around all year long here in the gallery. Yes, you're right. Wow, Jackie, I learned so much today about caterpillars and, and chrysalis and cocoons and pupa and moths and butterflies. It was just so much fun. Thank you so much for teaching me a lot of stuff. <laughs> My pleasure, Jen. It was great having you come visit us here. There's so much more to learn and there's so many more things you can learn about the differences between moths and butterflies. Wow, so great. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. I had so much fun learning just even a little bit about the butterflies. Hey, if you're interested in butterflies, come and talk with Jackie here on the second floor of the Science Center, Science North. Hmm, now I am getting a little hungry. I wonder if I can find myself some nectar. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. And if you have an idea on something that I should learn, let me know by leaving a comment below. See you next time on Jen learn stuff. <laughs>